Kia ora Year 11 and 12. This is a video where I'm going to talk about the proof of the cosine rule. Now the cosine rule is a really, really useful result that we use in non-right angle triangle situations. So we're first of all going to start by looking a little bit at the sine rule, which is the easiest of the rules we've learned this year. Um, and we're going to see when we can use the sine rule. So we're going to go over a couple of things to do with notation. I'm going to label this triangle with the three vertices big A, big B and big C. We always label the opposite side with the little letter. So this is side A, this is side B and this is side little c. Now the sine rule tells me that if I know an angle and the opposite side length and I know one other thing then I can get the matching thing for that one. So if I know um, this angle and this side length and the side length B, then I can work out this angle, right? Or if I know this pair and I know, let's have another colour, um, this angle, then I can work out B. So the sine rule has um, goes like this. We've got sine of A over little a is equal to sine of B over little b. I can write it like that. Now that's the easiest way to write it if you're finding an angle. Then we substitute and do a little bit of manipulation. Or we can write it, I oh, don't know what happened there, but never mind. So we can write it as sine A over sine A is equal to B over sine B. And that's usually how we write it when we're wanting to find a length. It doesn't really matter, but it means you have to do a little bit less cross multiplying and stuff. So that's all great, but it works only, again, if I've got this and this opposite side length. So what happens if I'm in a situation where I know quite a lot of stuff, but it just doesn't fit that pattern? So here's my triangle again, all right? So here's, let's see, what have we got? Here's big B, big C, and big A. So suppose that I'm in the unfortunate situation of knowing this angle A, but not knowing side length A, but knowing these two, whoops, wrong one, knowing side length C and side length B. So I still know two side lengths, but they're the wrong ones. So this is where the cosine rule is going to come to the rescue. I'm going to give you the two versions of the rule now, and then we're going to prove them. Now the proof is going to feel quite hard, and that is normal when you're looking at a proof for the first time. So I want you to watch the video through first before you try and take notes on it. So there are two versions of the cosine rule, just like there are two versions of the sine rule. And this is the one we use where we're trying to find an angle, right? But we know all three sides. And the one we use when we know um, two sides, but kind of the wrong two sides, is this one here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at what information we can work out by splitting this triangle up into two right angle triangles. So we're going to start at vertex B and we're going to drop a perpendicular line down. And that's going to give us two right angle triangles. I've got, done this nicely for once on the next slide. Even used a ruler. So there we've got one little right angle triangle there and we've got one little right angle triangle there. And we're going to split that up into two and we're going to do Pythagoras on both the triangles. And the thing we're going to use is that the length of this perpendicular line we're going to call h. Right now we never get to see h, we don't know where it is, but we know that it's the same h, whatever it is, in both of those right angle triangles. And that's how this proof works. Okay, so that's just a spare triangle. So here's my triangle. Let's put some things on again. So here's big A, big B, and big C. And this side length here is C, this one is A, and this whole thing down here is the key to the proof. The whole thing is length B because it's opposite this angle. But we're going to split this up now into two bits. We're going to say let's let this little bit here be X, and let's let this bit here be the leftover, B minus X. And this height thing here, the perpendicular value, is H. Now some of you are probably going, well hang on, we don't know what X is, right? And we don't know what H is. And that's right, we don't know what those things are, but we're going to use them artificially to find a way that I can link up 
the a's the b's and the c's so in the end the x and the h are going to disappear from my rule but that's a wee way away so first we're going to work on the two separate triangles and we're going to do year 10 pythagoras we're going to do pythagoras on this and then we're going to do pythagoras on this right excuse the very bad drawing so on the next slide we've got pythagoras on this little one all right so this length here is x this length is h and this length is side c right because remember we've got vertex big c over here so what can i say about this one well it's just not that hard we've got h squared plus x squared is equal to c squared all right so we're going to do that and then we're going to park it we're going to move on to the next triangle and do pythagoras again right so here's pythagoras again now remember this side length is a this side length is h and this is my leftover bit which is b minus x so by pythagoras's theorem we have b minus x squared plus h squared is equal to a squared if I expand these brackets, it's going to go like this. So writing it out really slowly, b minus x times b minus x plus h squared is equal to a squared. I get b squared minus 2bx plus x squared plus h squared equals a squared. All right, so we've now done Pythagoras twice over. Let's have a wee look at what we've got just checking I haven't marked it up nope that looks good so from the big bit of the triangle this one here I get this expression what did I have on the last page let's go back and check well I had this so now I'm going to take a new slide and I'm going to write those two things out next to each other okay so here we've got h squared plus x squared is equal to c squared so that's from that triangle and then in the next one I've got b squared minus 2bx plus x squared plus h squared equals a squared. So that's from Pythagoras on this bit, all right, with b minus x and h. And this is with x and h. But there are a couple of things in here that are artificial, right? So I don't even know what h is. So it would be really nice to somehow get rid of that h or h squared. So take a look here. Let's make h squared the subject of each equation. So from the first one, call this 1 and call this 2. From equation 1, we get h squared equals c squared minus x squared. And from equation 2, we get h squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx minus x squared. Right, so all I'm doing to do that is I've got a squared here and I'm just subtracting these things from both sides. Now, what can I say now? Well, I'm about to get rid of the h squared because I've got h squared is equal to blah blah and h squared is equal to blah blah. So those two things are the same. So now we can write this c squared minus x squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx or really should have used a thinner pen minus x squared now something cool is about to happen we're nearly there we've got minus x squared here and we've got minus x squared here so we can just lift them off both sides or actually add them to both sides that leaves me with this c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared plus 2bx so you should be able to see that we're getting closer to something cool here. But we've still got an x in here. So let's go back to our big triangle picture. Uh, no ruler this time, so I'm just going to draw it badly. So here it is here. Remember, h was this artificial thing here. This was x, and this was b minus x. And in real life, we're never going to see what that x value is. So we don't really want to have it in our formula because it's not going to be much use but now we're going to take a little look at just this triangle here All right so we go back to dealing with a nice easy right angle triangle let's just see where we've got down to so we've got to this part of the formula 
but we don't like this X being in here. Okay, I'm going to um, change X into something else. So we've got C squared. What have we got? C squared equals A squared minus B squared plus 2BX. So what is X? Well, X is sitting here. This is angle A, and this is little side C. So if we're dealing with really basic trig, we can write this. This side is the adjacent, and this side is the hypotenuse. So the cosine of angle A is equal to x over little c, which means that x is equal to c cos A. So now we've got rid of the h, and we're about to get rid of the x. So this is what we've got. c squared equals a squared minus b squared plus 2b c cos a. So this is a version of my sign rule. I don't usually write it that way though. I rearrange it to make it sound nicer. And we have this. a squared is equal to, so we're going to leave a squared here, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. Okay, so what we found is that by just using Pythagoras twice over, we started with a really artificial situation where we had the x here and the h here. But we showed that we knew an expression for the h. And so we then managed to get rid of the h and the x. So now what we left with is a really nice relationship between three sides and one angle. Okay, so let's see how that works for the case that we were stuck with before. Suppose that I know this angle here, which is A, but I don't know that side length A there. This side length here is length B, and this side length is length C. So if I know this angle and this side, and this side, this formula gives me a way to find this side. Right, and the formula that we use is this one here. Right, I've got one minute left in this video, so I'm going to show you how you can use it to find an angle. So let's see what we've got. We've got a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. But I could also rearrange it and make cos a the subject. So let's do that now. We get, um, I'm going to start by adding this to both sides. So 2BC cos A plus A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. 2BC cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared. So finally, the expression for the angle is cos A is equal to B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So that's the version of the cosine rule for finding an angle. And this is the version for finding a side length. Now luckily using the cosine rule is far, far easier than proving it. But hopefully that's explained where the rule came from. So what you might want to do now, um, if you enjoyed that kind of, then um, go watch it again, but this time try and follow through with me as I go. Thanks for watching, and I'll do some more videos um, over the next couple of weeks for Level 2 Trig.